if you spent any time on social media in this past week, you've seen a lot of photos that look like this. In fact, I even purchased and posted my own set. What you haven't seen is the context around how these photos come to be and who can get hurt in the process. If you're new here, I'm Jordan. I make videos about AI, machine learning, and emerging technologies. I'm also a PhD student at MIT, so if you want to hear more about that, grad life, mental health, then you should subscribe and turn on your post notifications. You can also follow me on my various socials. So the last few weeks, my entire newsfeed, in particular Instagram, has been filled with images that look like this. And they are from an app called Lensa AI, which you upload 10 to 20 photos of yourself to. You pay, I believe it was $2.99 for a set of 50 up to seven or eight ninety nine for a set of 200 and it will generate photos that look like you in different artistic styles whether that be anime whether that be more ethereal whatever it is this took over instagram <laughs> over the past two weeks and i'm guilty of using it myself without looking into how this model worked, what this app does, and who might be not benefiting in the process. So this video is designed to break down how this app works, where this data comes from, how this affects artists, what you should be concerned about, and other miscellaneous concerns that have come up since I posted a reel about this topic that got a lot of traction. First, how do these apps work? In short, this is a style transfer model. Lens AI, I believe, uses the stable diffusion model, which was created by a company called Hugging Face, which develops AI models that are often open sourced. In essence, you give these types of models a photo and a description of the style that you would like for it to apply, and then the model transforms that photo based on its learned understanding of that style from the data set that it has been trained on. And so I believe in the case of Lens AI, this is an API access. So Hugging Face both has an open source version of the model that has been trained that you can download, as well as an API that you can use where the model has been updated based on the most recent data set that it's had access to. And when you upload your photos to this app, when you pay to upload your photos to this app, it creates images of you that are in the style of various different types of art. Interestingly, this is something that I talked about a little bit in the reel that I made, especially if you're a person of color, a lot of them don't look like you. When I look through mine, which I'll show over here, a lot of them just look like generic black people. <laughs> generic light-skinned black people and I'm already a light-skinned person I'm already fairly fairly pale for coming off the boat but even with that it often made me paler than I was before which I'll get into in a little bit so stable diffusion the model that underlies this app is an open source app and the data set that underlies it is called Leon L-A-I-O-N and it is a data set of images and the alt text, so the descriptive text associated with those images. Importantly, the data set itself is a list of URLs, so links that point to the images and descriptions of the images that the links point to. And this is important because one of the things that has come up in the discussion around AI avatars, AI art, is art theft and the fact that the art that is within these data sets that these models are trained on is often art that's been created by people who did not consent to have their art used for this purpose, who are not compensated for their art being used for this purpose, who are not credited in the process, and how that is a problem. But because these data sets only use the link to the images and actually explicitly say in the FAQ that they are downloading the images for research purposes. They subsequently discard them. They're not profiting off of them. And so however you use these images and any copyright implications that come with them are your problem. 
Plus, these datasets are massive. This dataset in particular has over 5 billion images in it. So chances are, if you are an artist whose work has been integrated into this dataset, you probably don't know. These datasets are listed as being used for research purposes, which I am giving the benefit of the doubt of the, the researchers to say that that was something that they genuinely did because they wanted people to use it for research purposes. However, that is not a legal standard of any kind, so any company that wants to use that for profit is welcome to do so unless someone challenges them legally in court. So now you know that these AI art apps are often trained on datasets that comprise images that artists who created them had no say in whether or not their work was being used. And my next question on this front was essentially, how does this affect artists? And what I heard from people that I reached out to on this front was kind of two sides of the spectrum. Some people are fine with this. Some people didn't have strong feelings on their art being used in this way. I think that there was a big question of the difference between being inspired by a person's art versus using art to generate an AI model and what the line between those things are. On the other hand, there are a lot of people who are interested in being compensated for this work, or at least credited and asked in the first place. Some people have proposed that images that are generated include a reference sheet, essentially, that points to the original images that were used to generate that. Similarly, others have brought up the idea of being credited as part of the compilation of these types of data sets. When you have a data set of 5 billion images and weights that are generated based on that in a machine learning model, I don't know how much that really helps in terms of people getting recognition, but if artists are fine with that, then personally, as someone who's not an artist, I think it would be interesting if there were some way for artists to effectively opt into this kind of usage, something like a Getty Images, or a shutter box where people can upload their images for commercial use for profit based use and would get compensated for this and would get credited for it and would know that their images are being used for this as opposed to the current status quo. The other question that came up for me when it comes to this is how does it affect users? And a lot of this is going to be based on my personal experience with this app. I will link videos of people that I've talked to in the description. Foreign is one that I would recommend checking out. But it was interesting to see that a lot of the images that were generated were very Eurocentric. <laughs> I was, my skin tone was lightened in a lot of these images. I was made to look whiter, effectively, in a lot of these images. And that's something that concerns me. That is something that concerns me because I worry that it narrows our general conception of what beauty looks like, of what art looks like. And if we have these models that are generally biased towards kind of a Western Eurocentric style, whether that be in representing people, whether that be in representing other kinds of art, we know that there's just more images of that and that these data sets tend to be biased in that direction. And so it worries me a little bit that apps like this, generative art like this, is steering people who use it in a direction of believing that this is what things should look like as opposed to looking towards other forms of art and other representations of beauty and gender and things like that. All right, speed round. One thing that came up a lot when I posted this reel is essentially how does this compare to like automation, inspiration, the fact that other people use other people's work without crediting them all the time, etc. So I would say that when it comes to the inspiration argument, I think it's certainly great if people are inspired by AI art to create new art. I think that that's great. I think that when it comes to creating AI art that is inspired by a certain style of art, it's very rarely in this level of a one-to-one -one inspiration. So usually when you go to a museum or you see a piece of artwork that you like that inspires you, it's not like you're going home and like recreating that but with your face on it. And with systems like this, with systems like Dolly, you can like literally type in like, I would like a portrait of myself, but in the style of Van Gogh. And that seems a little bit problematic to me. 
but I certainly have no issue with people being inspired by AI generative art. I think that's great. When it comes to people using other people's work without crediting them all the time, that's definitely true. That's been an issue on the internet for years. I don't think that that's a good thing. And I don't think that because that is the status quo on the internet, that is how we should also feel about AI art. Like, I feel like that's just not, that's not personally how I would be interested in approaching this. Another thing that came up in my comments was around fair use, whether or not this is a transformative use of the existing artwork and therefore people don't need to be compensated for it. I'm not a lawyer. I've been meeting to collab with Devin on this topic for a while, among other topics. Haven't gotten around to it. Can't answer that. Another question that came up is the tension around what real art is or being a real artist is and how computational tools have affected that and how some people don't think that if you're using a computer to create art, you are a real artist or things like that. I don't consider myself to be an artist really. And so I do think that AI tools can be incorporated into how people create art, but I, I just don't consider myself to be part of the art community. And so I'd be very interested in how people in the art community factor generative art into their artistic process. Another thing that came up was how people feel about the personal data aspect of this. So Lens AI does use your data to train their models further. I'm sure they also sell it. This was something that I didn't cover in the reel that I made. It's not something that I really plan to cover in this video, largely because you're on YouTube, you're on TikTok, you're on Instagram reels. All of these platforms are also selling your data. <laughs> and I'm not saying that Lens AI shouldn't do that, but what I am saying is that if your concern is that your personal data is being sold by the companies that you use, that develop apps that you use, you've got a bigger problem at that point. <laughs> I don't think that that's like the biggest concern that I have about this particular app. And then the last thing that came up was around bad actors. So people who are using this to target specific artists who are interested in causing direct harm, essentially. And what I would say to that is that, do these tools make it easier for those people to do that? Probably, yeah. I'm not familiar enough with those issues to really speak on that, so I don't want to speak in detail. But at the same time, I think that people who are interested in acting in bad faith will do so regardless of the tools available to them. And I don't, I don't know that this is something that really makes a huge difference in that particular part of the internet, but if anyone has examples of it doing so, I would love to hear it. In short, if you were planning on spending $2.99 or $5.99 or $8.99 or however much it is for the different packages of images on AI avatars, I would maybe not do that <laughs> at this point and spend your money on something else that'll make you a lot happier. And speaking of knowing what your money is supporting, many of us open our hearts and make donations during this holiday season. But when you donate, how can you really feel confident that the money that you're donating is having a large impact? You could do weeks of research to find charities, figure out what they do, how effective they are, and how that charity might use your money, or you could check out GiveWell. There you'll find free research and recommendations about the charities that can save and improve lives the most per dollar. GiveWell spends over 40,000 hours each year researching charitable organizations and only directs funding to a few of the highest impact evidence-based opportunities that they found. Over 100,000 donors have used GiveWell to donate over $1 billion. Rigorous evidence suggests that these donations will save over 150,000 lives and improve the lives of millions more. And they allocate your tax deductible donation to the charity or fund you choose without taking a cut. And if you're skeptical, you can access GiveWell's research for free. GiveWell wants as many donors as possible to make informed decisions about high impact giving, so they publish all their research and recommendations on their site for free, no signups required. Personally, I've been looking for more ways to donate during this holiday season, so I decided to donate to GiveWell's top charities fund because I wanted my donations to have as much impact as possible. So if you're still looking for that holiday gift that will inspire joy in the person who receives it and have a much wider impact, go to givewell.com slash Jordan. And if you've never given to one of GiveWell's recommended charities before, you can have your donation matched to up to $100 before the end of the year or while matching funds last. Otherwise, if you're interested in other ways that data sets can be complicated, you can check out this video up here. You can follow me on my various socials down here and I will see you all in the next one.